Hi, my name is Karen Hughes and I am the Domestic Violence Clinical Service Coordinator for the Life Crisis Center and I want to welcome you to the Life Crisis Today. With me today is Wendy Myers and she's the Executive Director of the Maryland Children's Alliance. And we're going to be talking about the Child Advocacy Centers and about child abuse. Welcome Wendy. Thank you Karen. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, child abuse is a tough topic. Um, and I know that you have just transitioned from working with the Cricket Center here in, in Berlin to actually the whole state of Maryland with the uh, Maryland Children's Alliance. So that must be really exciting for you. It is. It's very exciting. Yeah. I so enjoyed my time at the Cricket Center and we grew that program and uh, difficult to leave it, but yeah. now I still get to see, you know, the great work being done there as well as, you know, all the other jurisdictions in the state. Right. Well, let's talk about the child advocacy centers because you do not just ours the tri-county area but you also do the whole state what is a child advocacy center sure so a child advocacy center is a safe child-friendly uh, environment where children who have potentially been maltreated will come and the entire investigative and prosecutorial team along with medical and mental health practitioners like yourself mm -hmm. um, they are all located in one safe place so that a child um, can come there and uh, talk to the professionals all in one location mm -hmm. rather than having to go perhaps to talk to a law enforcement officer in one location and a social worker in another location. All of those folks are co-located mm -hmm. in that and just in that one space. Right. And it's a multidisciplinary approach. It so is. So that everybody can also share and talk to each other too. Absolutely. There yeah. are agreements in place so that the entire team can communicate about what's happening with the child and the family. Um, you know, to determine you know the best course of action for that family. Mm -hmm. um, I know the Life Crisis Center is involved in Worcester, Wicomico, and Somerset County's child advocacy centers, um, and they're all different. I can only imagine across the state. What are the differences that you know of with the different child advocacy centers? Sure. So I've been learning all about the differences. I've we have 24 jurisdictions mm -hmm. in the state, so that's our 23 counties plus Baltimore City. Mm -hmm. So there are 24 child advocacy centers in the wow. state of Maryland so I am currently learning all about those and you know some have a, um, a very homey feel to them mm -hmm. it's some of them are, are actual houses that mm -hmm. have been designed to look comfortable and mm -hmm. and warm and welcoming to families some um, are in government buildings we have one that's actually in a law enforcement building mm -hmm. um, with a separate entrance and it's very child-friendly um, but you know every jurisdiction has made those uh, decisions based on their own partners based on their funding mm -hmm. um, and there you know there are lots of decisions that go into that process but mm -hmm. they all have the child at the center and their mission is to come around that child and lessen the trauma of abuse right and the life crisis center as I said does all three here on the shore um, and we have our mental health therapists go to them so I know yes. that you've had interactions with, with some of those as sure. well yeah sure so we provide in-house uh, therapy um, the cricket center in Worcester County and then there are also child advocacy centers in Wicomico and Somerset mm -hmm. so that's the tri-county of course that we're talking about and um, Life Crisis does provide therapists for all three of those mm -hmm. counties so yeah. children are all served in the tri-county area mm -hmm. by by um, practitioners who are, are you know able to come to them mm -hmm. um, in, in a place that's that's safe and, and comfortable for them. Right, right. And for, with your new role as the executive director of the Maryland Children's Alliance, talk about that. What is the Children's Alliance and, and um, what, how do you help them? Yeah, so uh, I just began in January, mm. so I'm still learning, but um, what we do at Maryland Children's Alliance is we provide support to all 24 jurisdictions within mm -hmm. the state of Maryland. So we assist with legislative issues, we assist with onboarding um, new directors, and training. Mm -hmm. um, we provide technical assistance for our CACs across the state. Mm -hmm. um, we provide training. We provide the child first training that all the forensic interviewers in the mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. um, so that they know the right way to sit right. down and, and, and discover you know what the story is with right. the child, what's happening with the child. So um, so we provide all of those things okay. and there are there's a, a chapter in every state mm -hmm. and um, I'm able to interact with other chapter directors um, through various, um, you know, different meetings and, mm -hmm, and trainings. 
so mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot about the chapters and um, and then of course we all report to the National Children's Alliance. Okay, okay. I'm sure all be, with all those 24 jurisdictions they reach a lot of folks. Yes. Um, what kind of statistics do you have for us? Yes. So do you want me to start with Tri-County or sure. would you or like to start with uh, it doesn't Maryland? Matter. Let's okay. go with Maryland first right. and then we'll go to us. Sure. So for Maryland, the 24 jurisdictions uh, last year, so 2021, mm -hmm. um, we served 5,474 children wow. within the state of Maryland in wow. 2021. And that's a 14.76 increase over the previous year. Um, so, wow. yeah, so we also provided, Maryland Children's Alliance provided 456 hours of training for professionals within our state. Mm. Um, and that, that price tag for those uh, hours of training was over $67,000 that Maryland Children's Alliance was able to put back into the professionals doing this work within yeah, the state. That's great. Yeah. So for Tri-County, so that's Worcester, Wicomico, and Somerset, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in 2021, we served 491 children mm -hmm. between the three child advocacy mm -hmm, centers. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a 17% increase over the previous year. Wow. Is there a reason for the increase, do you think? So we know in 2020, children weren't being seen, right? Oh, that's true. So um, they did not have interaction with, you know, teachers and mm -hmm. professionals. Um, a lot of children probably didn't even make it to the doctor unless they happened to be sick. Mm -hmm. A lot of doctor's offices were only taking, you know, urgent cases mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. the COVID pandemic. So, um, so kids were not, um, you know, we weren't getting the reports that we right. would normally get. Right. Yeah. That was a shame. Yes. But, yes. but we're still reaching folks. We are so still reaching great. folks. And, yes. And even we're there for them. Yes. Even though all that was happening in our world at that time, child advocacy centers were still open. The doors were still open. They were still providing that multidisciplinary approach mm -hmm. to the investigation. And um, in my opinion, one of the most important pieces of that is the therapeutic piece, mm -hmm. which Life Crisis still provided during mm -hmm. that time. Oh, I know we did. Yes. Um, mm, it didn't slow down for us. No. It kept us very busy. Um, Child abuse is something that folks don't want to talk about, and they don't really want to like have to say, well, it's not in my family, but mm, it does happen. How, as a professional, I know I'm a mandated reporter, and there are those that have to be a mandated reporter, but general people, they can report too, and I don't mm -hmm. think they all know that, that they sure. can be a reporter. What is that process? How do they know when to, uh, and what do they need yeah. to report? Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to know with absolute certainty mm -hmm. that something is happening with mm -hmm. a child. You can have a suspicion. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do if you do have a suspicion is to allow the professionals who are trained to determine, you know, exactly mm -hmm. what is happening. Right. Um, and and then, then they can make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the alternative is, is not reporting and then, you know, maybe More. allowing a child to remain in a situation that is, that is not good. Right. Um, so, you know, because something is reported does not mean a child is going to be removed from a home. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean with absolute certainty that something is happening. You can say, I just am worried about this child. Mm -hmm. Can you check on this child? Mm -hmm. um, or this child has some kind of behavior that um, has changed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, you know, reporting is, is the best course of action. Right. And then the professionals that are trained to do that work, uh, you know, are able to determine what's right. happening. Right. Now, if a child does disclose, I know people like, do I ask questions? Do I not ask questions? Right. Um, what if I ask questions and that like does something for the investigation and I, right. I've ruined it? Right. What do well, I do in that case if I were that sure. person? Right, and that's a tough thing. Like none of nobody wants to hear yeah. that a child is is, is hurting. Um, the best thing to do is say, "I believe you," and let's let's find somebody who can help. Right, and then that's when you make the report. Right. Um, asking questions may, you know, confuse the child, mm -hmm. or um, you know, I think probably I would be emotional if a child that I cared about mm -hmm. was being hurt. Mm -hmm. So um, the best thing for me to do is say, "I believe you," right. and let's find somebody who can help yeah. us with this. And you don't have to have absolute proof that. The, like you said, right. I'm just worried about this child, or the child did tell me, and sure. then I now to re need to report that. Absolutely. So where do they report? What, what, yeah. So so you can call law enforcement. Okay. You can call um, the sheriff's office in whatever county you live in. You can call the state police. You can call any law enforcement agency, and okay. they can put you in touch. Okay. There's a statewide um, hotline number. Um, you can also call child 
advocacy centers. Mm -hmm. So you can call um, you know, an individual child advocacy center to make a report. You can also call the Department of Social Services to make a report. Okay. So any of those agencies um, also are the Life appropriate. Crisis center hotline. Or you can call Life <laughs> Crisis Center hotline. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. very good choice. And that's 24 hours as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes things don't happen between 9 a.m. and 5 mm -hmm. p.m. So mm -hmm. um, it's great to have those resources in our communities that you know can can take those calls right. afterward yeah. after hours. Yeah. So anything else about child abuse or the child advocacy centers that you want to make sure that we tell our yeah. viewers today? So child advocacy centers are considered first responders. You know, okay. they they respond okay. to um, you know 24 hour um, concerns about kids. So it's that's their role. And so I don't want people to ever feel like you know I can't call them. They're so busy. You know that's what they want. They want you to call. Mm -hmm. So um, they want to help these kids. Mm -hmm. um, so and in addition to that, um, child advocacy centers need our help. You mm -hmm. know they they do not. It's a mandate, a statewide mandate to have a child advocacy center in mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. county in the state of Maryland. But it's a non-funded mandate. So there are frequently you know child mm -hmm. advocacy centers that have to provide um, best practice, and so you have to have people who are you know trained in best practice. Mm -hmm. But and have a there's team. no and have a team, but there's no funding for that. Right. So if you see um, Worcester, Wicomico, or Somerset County planting pinwheels in April or having fundraisers to support their programs, please you know if you're not able to attend, you know share it on your social media, mm -hmm. get involved. They might need help, you know, doing you know tangible things like planting pinwheels in right. April. Yeah. So if you can get involved in, in those programs, it, it really does mean a lot to have that community support. Yeah, yeah. I know um, th there's a walk in Ocean City that happens. For there China's. is. Um, and um, different counties do different things to raise that money. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, Wendy, I want to welcome you and thank you. And um, I really appreciate your time today that you're able to share this information because this is a, it's a hard topic, but it's a needed topic. Absolutely. Because we do need to keep our kids safe. We do. Yeah. And we can do that as a community. Yes, definitely. And if you have any questions or have any concerns or worried about a child that you're not sure is this abuse or not abuse, you can call. Um, you heard where to call. You can call the law enforcement. You can call the child advocacy centers. You can call social services or you can call the Life Crisis Center. The Life Crisis Center does have a hotline. It is 24 hours a day. And that number is 410-749-4357. There's lots of other ways to reach the Life Crisis Center too. Um, 211, we are part of that um, system. Um, and that's information and referral. But if we got the call about information about what do I do about child abuse, we would definitely do the report that way as well. Um, we also have text to chat. Um, that number is 898-211. You do have to put in your zip code for that, but then you can text it. Um, if you're not a person who wants to talk on the phone, you can text it. We're also on Facebook. We are on Instagram. Um, our website is www.lifecrisiscenter.org. So there's lots and lots of ways. Reach out. If you're worried about a child, reach out and get the help. Thank you. And I also want to thank PAC-14 for allowing us to have this time to bring this show to you. Thank you.